As many students of prophecy know, the prophecy regarding the mark of the beast predicts the need for a religious law. And so the powers that be need to do all they can to assure religious laws become part of society as soon as possible. And this is why you see what Al Gore just stated yesterday. They must rush because their dying God knows his time is short. And so this is why Trump did what he did a few weeks ago to help the government approved 501c3 pastors have the ability to lobby for religious laws. See my May 4th video on this fact. As we also know, according to the Christian Bible, the mark of the beast is Sunday laws. In fact, the Vatican has admitted more than once in writing that their unbiblical Sunday Sabbath is their mark of authority over all churches and even over the Bible itself. And so this is why we have seen tens of thousands of articles the world over the last few decades wherein the popes of Rome and their political pawns have pushed for religious laws and specifically a legally mandated Sunday Sabbath. See my Sabbath attack page for over 1,000 of these articles and videos from the last 12 years alone. Now, if you recall, though, back in December of 2004, we all witnessed the devastating tsunami that killed over 300,000 people. But were you also aware that within a few weeks of that devastating disaster, the Vatican friend and cooperative in this long prophesied agenda by the name of John McLeod declared the reason people died in that tsunami was because they weren't going to church on Sundays. So the prophecy regarding their need for Sunday laws to prevent disasters finally became a reality in the minds of many scoffers that doubted the prophecy that very day. See my February 2005 newsletter on that historic fact. And now we see Al Gore, who was, by the way, approached by John Paul II to push the global warming agenda decades ago. And I have a few videos on my climate change page on the website if you're interested to verify this. This man, Al Gore, was caught lying by every single living person on the planet regarding his Vatican-contrived prediction that global warming was to come to a frightening conclusion in 2016. That never actually did. In fact, his prediction about the polar ice cap being gone by 2016 was not only a proven lie, the ice cap has actually been documented as growing in size. You might want to check out this website when you get time. And by the way, let me go to this site here now because I have it already uh, linked in as being okay to visit. But uh, here, let me put it in. But when you go to this website, you'll notice if you're using Firefox or some other types of browsers, they have already built in some device in the browser to make this page, this website, come up as a dangerous website to visit. They do this so as to hide what's literally on this web page about all the evidence that global warming is a lie. I also have some other websites linked out on my, uh, on my climate change page that shows over 31,000 scientists have proven global warming is in fact a lie. And so now we see Al Gore is once again pushing the Pope's global warming initiative, no matter how much evidence is against it, but only this time, and thanks to Trump's recent executive orders regarding religious law, Gore can now use the religious card to declare God himself is demanding we all do something about climate change, or global warming as it's really being called. So why are they doing this? To summarize quickly, and for those that want an in-depth look at all the facts on this, see my webpage on global warming will be used to enforce the mark of the beast when you get time. This is what the prophecy declares will now happen. The current calamities we see all over the world are prophesied to increase due to the sins of mankind coming to a festering and putrid head, just as they did in Noah's day when they legalized homosexual marriage of which caused the Lord to move Noah to build the ark due to the global flood he was about to send. Satan knew this then, and he knows this now. And so he must react to this prophesied reality accordingly. Only this time, he has come up with a way to use these already increasing global disasters to his advantage to try and get every soul on earth in his camp ready for hellfire. Using his man of sin in Rome, he has devised a plan to convince all the nations on earth to gather as one so as to try and do something about the global disasters by using the excuse 
that we are all in this together, seeing how we're all on the same planet. Once there, and this was fulfilled with the Paris Accord recently, he will then declare through the Pope that we need to work together to save the planet. But there was still a problem in his agenda the last few decades. The mark of the beast is a religious law, as students of prophecy knew and have been preaching for decades. And so Satan needed to come up with a way to allow religion to be a legalized option in government regulation. The talking points to that end received a major boost when that Vatican operative from Scotland's Presbyterian Church declared that refusing to attend church on Sundays caused the tsunami of 2004. And so many started to associate the calamities to disobedience to the redefined God of the Bible. Or as another prophecy stated, they, Rome, will promote another Jesus for the world to follow after. And then just two years after that tsunami, Bush signed it into law that all government 501c3 churches can in fact lobby religious law. But because the preachers of filthy lucre still feared the Roman Catholic IRS, Trump stepped up to quench those fears with his executive order on May 4th, 2017. And now we see all sorts of religious banter in politics. And that's why Gore's saying what he's saying. He has the legal right to do so now. And they have been doing this so much recently that I had to create a new page on the website just to keep track of it all. So now that religious law is to be a legal reality soon. And yes, this is why we see the talk of Sharia law in the USA as well recently. El Gore now has received the go-ahead from Rome to start mentioning God in his global warming fiasco so as to open the door for the enforcement of the religious laws Rome plans to enforce, or the mark of the beast as we know it. And according to prophecy, this is what's going to happen next. The calamities will increase. The media will concentrate on making sure everyone on earth knows that they have increased, so much so they will even fabricate calamities to bolster the panic in the less frequent regions. The Pope will then step forward under the direction of the physical Antichrist, who by now is literally standing on the planet in bodily form, claiming to be Jesus Christ incarnate. And then after this demon masquerading as Jesus goes about healing a few people and speaking in melodious tones to garner many souls into his camp, as well as standing as a glorified angel of light, he then demands everyone on earth must keep Sunday holy so as to appease God, who will then stop the calamities once they obey him. And to assure everyone does as he commands from Rome, the leaders under his control will then prevent the buying and selling of everyone on the planet that refuse to bow in worship to the mandate or receive the mark, as prophecy calls it, because Rome calls Sunday Sabbath their mark. Now do you see why every CEO on the planet and every political leader on earth have had those closed-door meetings with the Pope recently? Now, since all that Satan spews is already based on lies, the disasters will increase anyway, because it has nothing to do with people breaking the Roman Sabbath. Those calamities, like in Noah's day, are the end result of all the sins Satan has moved billions to embrace all along. And so to get around that, Satan, who most think at this time is really Jesus Christ on earth, will then declare all the real Christians, still keeping the seventh day Sabbath, are blaspheming his name, and so they must now die to stop the calamities because they refuse to keep Sunday holy. And so he will move all those that worship him to step up to surround the people of God as the prophecy regarding Armageddon predicted. Now do you see why we already have blasphemy laws in Islam and Sharia law is right now being pushed in American courts? Since the people are already used to people dying under blasphemy laws, this will be accepted worldwide. And so all the people of the world who have been conditioned the last few decades to kill thanks to watching violent Hollywood movies, playing violent video games, listening to violent rock music, and even participating in gambling on violent sports where people actually die in the ring. All of them will then declare their loyalty to the Pope and his Antichrist to go forth and kill the Sabbath keepers by surrounding them on a specific date set forth by Rome. Problem is, this action seals the fate of all those that obey the Pope and his dying God who claims to be Jesus. The plagues then begin. And as prophesied, we see that it is time for thee, Lord, to work, for they have made void thy law. The Sabbath keepers still alive at this time are counted in that prophesied number that stand firm in obedience to God's law due to the Holy Spirit inside them that promised to help them to do so. And the obedient people of God never even get so much as a boil or heat stroke 
from the seven plagues falling upon all the wicked that have bowed to the Pope and his Antichrist. The eastern sky then splits, the dead in Christ rise up, and we all go home together to leave behind all those that worship the Pope and his dying God. The pulverized dead bodies of the lost souls are now all over the planet as rotting dung due to plague number seven, which, by the way, is the 125-pound chunks of hail falling from the sky, killing them all, as prophesied. And it is now that Beelzebub truly rules his subjects, as his given name predicted he would thousands of years ago. For the name Beelzebub, translated into English, is the God of the Dung. Thank you for watching. God bless.